You might have noticed that the reading was a little different than you had in your bulletin. Thank you, Kelly, for reading all of that. Um, I had to add on a little bit to this morning because we always see this first part of this story where the wise men come and they bring their gifts, right? I'll leave this up here so you guys can come and see. This actually is gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Um, very little bits of it, but I'll leave this up here so you guys can come up later and look at it if you want to. They brought their gifts, and we know that part of the story, right? They came, they stopped in Jerusalem at the palace where they thought they would find the new king, right? Because they saw the star, they knew they were coming to see the king, and where would the king be? But in the castle, in the, in the place where the king's supposed to be, right? In the, in the, in the palace of the king, kingdom. So they stopped in Jerusalem and said, where's the new king? And they were like, what are you talking about? When they finally figured it out, they went on, and they were supposed to go back and tell Herod... But they didn't. And normally that's where the story ends for us. And that's what we know of the story. But the story continues. And so I had to add it in this morning so that you could see the rest of the story. Right? Because after the wise men didn't go back. Right? The wise men, these magi, why are they wise men? Who are they really? Astrologers. Um, some, some scholars want to say they're priests of Zorasta or Zoroastrian priests, um, but they're probably astrologers from, from some place in the east who looked at the stars and knew that a star was going to rise and proclaim the coming of the birth of a new king. And when they saw this star rise in the sky, what did they do? They gathered together, they got their gifts together, and they started on their trek. And how many kings were there, or how many wise guys were there? How many were there? Enough. I got at least two up here in the front, right? Because I've said this here before, right? There was not necessarily three. We always say there was three because how many gifts were there? Three. There were three, three gifts. So we say there are three wise men. And the wise men actually have names. And, and they've been given names. The three wise men are Casper, Malpioi, and Balthazar, or something like that. C, M, and B. Other names start with. But we say there was three wise guys who came, three wise men who came from afar and came to Jesus. And when did they get to see Jesus? He was probably two, and we'll get to that in just a minute. right? They weren't there. There was no time travel. They, they weren't there the night that Jesus was born like the shepherds were, or the day that Jesus was born like the shepherds were. They showed up many years later because they traveled from afar, right? Yeah, that's my other joke for the morning, right? Wise men should have on firemen's helmets. Why should they have on firemen's helmets? Because they came from afar. I lived in Texas for many years, so far, 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 right? <laughs> Okay, so the, the wise men show up, they bring their gifts, and they, they meet with Jesus in the home. Actually, it says that in Matthew at the very beginning, it says, and they, they came to the home, right? The wise men looked for him, and they showed up, and they, they, looked, they came to the place where he was living, to the dwelling place, to his home. And they came in, and they gave him respect, and they gave him the gifts, and they worshipped him. And when they got ready to set out, they went a different way because they had been warned not to go back to Herod. Because Herod, when he wanted to come and pay homage to the, to the king, what was he really going to do? He was going to kill him. Because Herod is king, and any new king is a threat to that king. Right? So the wise men go off a different way. And then, Jesus, and then Joseph is warned in a dream again that something's going to happen and Herod wants to kill Jesus. So he says, go to where? Egypt. And what's important about Egypt? What happened in Egypt? Joseph went there, right? A different Joseph. Not this Joseph, a different Joseph. Went to Egypt, became the, the Pharaoh's second-hand man, saved the kingdom of Egypt, saved all the people of Israel, and then Pharaoh died, and the new Pharaoh came in and thought, what are all these Israelites going to do? They're going to run over our kingdom. So he put them into slavery. And then what happened? God brought his people out of Egypt. And now God is telling Joseph to take Mary and Jesus and go to where? The land of bondage. 
This place that we're living now is a promised land. This is a land that God promised that we were going to live in. This is a place that God said he was going to protect us. And now God is telling the, fa the earthly father of the savior of the world to take him into the land of bondage. We think of this story as something that's precious and sweet and looks really nice sitting on a coffee table. And it's not. It's a story about life. It's a story about death. It's a story about how things in our lives don't always go the way that we want them to. Because you see, Joseph gets this dream and he gets up the next morning and he takes Mary and Jesus and he runs to the, to the country of Egypt. And he stays in Egypt until Herod dies. And when Herod figures out that he's been bamboozled, what does he do? He goes back and he remembers the time because right when the wise men came to him, he said, tell me when the star appeared. Why did Herod want to know when the star appeared? So he'd know how old the child was, right? Because the star rose the day Jesus was born. And so now Herod has a time frame. And so when the, when the wise men didn't come back to tell Herod where Jesus was, Herod told his people, go into Bethlehem and kill every male child two years old or younger. Because the star probably appeared at two years ago. This is known and normally celebrated. That's an interesting word to think about when we talk about death of children. But it is a high holy day in the church. The slaughter of the innocents. Remembering the day that the children of Bethlehem died because Herod killed them because he was afraid of what Jesus was going to do. And that's where we wrap this little scene up and say it's so nice to look at. And if we actually really understand everything that goes into this story, it's not a neat, 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 nice story that you want to have on your coffee table. But to understand this story completely is what truly gives us hope. You see, it's about this baby that was born almost 2,019 years ago. Probably 2,024 years ago. He came into this world to show us how to live. And these guys from a land far off that shouldn't even understand this story or know anything about it figured out what was happening and saw the star rise and came because they knew that Jesus didn't just come for the people of Israel. They knew that Jesus came for all people, for everyone, everywhere. And they followed that star and they found this new king and they went in and paid him homage and they didn't go back to the, to the king of Israel because they knew that something was going to happen. And so they went out and told people about what they had seen. And then Jesus goes to Egypt and after Herod dies he comes back and he starts his life living out in, in the country where he was called to be. So that he could bring his message of good news and great joy for all people. You see, this story is truly a story of hope. Because even in the darkest of times, even in the, the deepest of valleys, God is always there. Because God not only sent Joseph back to Egypt. Joseph was already there. He went back. To the place of bondage that he already called his people out of. See, that right there to me is what is hopeful about this story. Because God is saying, I've got you. And I want you to go to this place. And Joseph was probably like, really? Do you want us to go to Egypt? Egypt is not the place that we want to go to. Because those are the people that held us in bondage for so many years. And that's the place that we had to fight to get out of. And they, and they almost killed us after we left. God, do you really want us to do this? And God says, yes. Because I'm holding on to your hand. And I'm walking with you on this journey. And I'm going to be with you. So see the hope that we have in this baby born in a manger. Even in the darkest of times. Even in the, the deepest of valleys. Because the gifts that he's given to us are greater than these three gifts ever could be. And he wants you to open your treasure box. And to share the gifts that he's given to you with all of the world. So remember, when things look bad, when the valleys look deep, that God is always with you. That he sent his son to come to be a savior of the world. He sent his son to come to be your savior. And in that there is hope. 
and in that there is love, and in that there is gifts that are immeasurable that He keeps giving back to you. So open your hearts to this baby in a manger, to this two-year-old that gets gifts of, of incense and gold and, and spices they use to anoint the dead. Open your heart to the one who wants you to follow him, who came to give his life for you, knowing that it might not always be the easiest life, but that he's always promised to walk with you through it.